Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the pre-stream podcast. How is everyone today? I hope I find you well, and I welcome you to what I will be calling today the Update Show. That is correct. Today is Sunday, the 3rd of April, 2022. I, of course, am Darkside Phil. I welcome you here to the show. I hope that you guys are doing well and having a good weekend. And I hope you're ready for some updates. Because we've got a lot of updates to talk about today. I've got updates to my schedule. I've got updates to what we'll be doing during my birthday marathon event. i got updates to the cuisine that we'll eating dur- be eating during the birthday event for Feasting with the King. <coughs> Excuse me. I got all kinds of updates. All right, so that being said, it should be a good time, a nice chill time here today. Outside of all the updates, do I have too much to talk about? Um, I'm thinking of like like game news and, and wise. No, not really. Not much going on in the realm of gaming news today. Uh, more of a slow day. So, as usual, may open up to Q and A and have a little bit of chat and, and discussion with you guys uh, if time permits. I don't see why time wouldn't permit, but uh. You know, every day I do the pre-stream podcast and I say, oh, you know, some days I don't have a lot to talk about. And the next thing you know, it's 12.30 p.m. Pacific time. It's time to start gaming. Whoa, where did the time go, right? (laughs) Flies by. Uh, First of all, it is cloudy outside. It is cool outside. It is a nice spring day outside. You might say cloudy is a nice spring day. Yes, here in Washington State, I welcome the clouds. I like moderate weather. When it's cool and cloudy outside, it actually means that the office is nice and cool and I have the window open and the fan blowing nicely on me and I'm not sweating. You know, some of these days when the sun is out there, I'm sitting in here, it's like an oven. I'm like, and I really, you know, it's only April 3rd. I'm definitely trying to extend the amount of time that I can enjoy the fresh spring air and not have to put the air conditioner into the window. It's going to happen. In fact, I would probably think by the end of this month, I've got to install the air conditioner. Usually temperatures dramatically increase here over the course of April. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the month we're having high 60, 70 degree weather, which means it's like 80 plus degrees in this office uh, on a sunny day. So we'll see. But also, the spring also means my allergies are in effect. And I can tell you right now, my right sinus is swollen. I can feel it. My face is itching. I'm touching my face like, ah, it itches. Here we go again. It's usually like this for a few weeks um, as the things are blooming outside because they are indeed. I'm looking outside and I can see the trees are growing back. Flowers are blooming. And it makes me have this this pollen reaction. But it is what it is. Um, So let's talk. First of all, (laughs) as you guys know, this is a big week because this is the build up to my birthday bash this coming Wednesday when I'm going to be doing a gaming marathon with all of you, right? It should be a good time. Hope you guys will join me for that if you can this coming Wednesday, April 6th, my actual 40th birthday, a big milestone birthday for me. And it'll be very exciting to celebrate that with all of you, okay? That being said, we have many things to talk about in regards to the event because we have a lot more direction as of today in regards to what's going to happen on Wednesday, which is good. But I do have kind of a negative thing to talk about first that i like to preface this with and get out of the way i don't know if my balloons are going to make it to wednesday you may notice something take a look at them the four looks great the circle the o ain't doing so good it looks like it might have sprung a leak at some point during the week now it is a helium balloon so they last a while they're supposed to last a while but i believe it sprung a leak at some point i don't know when i can't you know i can't figure it out where it is And so it's going to slowly deflate every day. (laughs) There's nothing I can do about that. And it's it's Sunday. My birthday's Wednesday. So I have three more days to go. If you actually take a look at the thumbnails for either the pre-stream podcast or the daily wrap over the last three days, you'll notice that at first it was fully like massively inflated. Every day it's like a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. Now you can start to see see these like wrinkle lines on it because some of the helium escaped. So it's... (laughs) It's probably going to get worse and worse. And by Wednesday, this thing might be like half the flame. I don't know. It'll be a droopy, a droopy O for Wednesday. Um, there's not much you could do. No, I'm not going to buy more. Black Lady Walking in the chat says, buy more. Yeah, I'm going to buy more balloons for one day, right? When I have my day off on Tuesday, I'm going to go buy more for just Wednesday. No, I don't think so. Uh, but that's funny. Darziak says, does that mean that your voice <clears throat> is going to slowly get more high-pitched? 
Well, I mean, my voice is already obnoxiously high-pitched. So if it does get more high-pitched, that might actually become more annoying because if my voice gets more high-pitched, then all of a sudden you're going to hear the octave going up and the next thing you know, it's going to get higher and higher and then how are you going to listen? It's going to actually pierce your eardrums. How are you going to be able to watch my stream if you can't hear anything? All right, that's just a stupid joke. But anyway, <clears throat> um, no, the good news is it's a slow leak. So even though there probably is a little bit of helium in the office, there's a tremendous amount of oxygen to off put the helium. And no, I'm not getting a helium high and it's not screwing with my, my voice or anything like that. Um, it's just a shame that it might, not make it, it might not make it to my actual birthday. It's nice. The balloons have been nice. This was actually a really good idea for a milestone birthday to do something different like this because previous years I usually have streamers or silly, you know, things dangling behind me. And this year it was different because we just did these big balloons, which is nice. They stand out. But at the very same time... Uh, <laughs> I don't think I really don't think that circle is gonna or the yeah, you saying circle. I don't think the the O is gonna last in forty, the zero. So, all that being said, um, you know it is what it is. We'll see what happens as we approach the birthday. All right. So let's talk about the schedule for this week, and then what I'd like to do is give you a big update regarding the birthday marathon on Wednesday. Okay. So today. Sunday, we return to a full day of streaming. What I mean by that is yesterday was not a full day of streaming. As you know, I only did one stream yesterday. I needed to take the evening to work on my taxes, okay? Now, I'll tell you about an update about that in just a moment. Today is a full streaming day. Today, it's, it's the pre-stream podcast right now where we chill. We have some interaction and fun, some good discussion. And then, Ghost Wire Tokyo continues. Now, what I will say to you guys is thank you to those who are still continuously tuning into the Ghostwire Tokyo playthrough, those who are enjoying it with me and supporting it. It's not a large group of people. Now, as I continue to play, I'm 12 hours into the game, by the way. Um, we're roughly getting around 200 to 250 viewers. That's not great, especially for a relatively new release game. Um, but I really feel like people didn't give the game a fair chance simply because the reviewers kind of slammed it. I do feel the game is better than the review said, at the same time, I can kind of agree with a lot of the points that reviewers made. I just don't think that they weighed down the game as much as the reviewers said. So, for example, the reviewers said, oh, the game's too repetitive. Well, the game is repetitive. It's open world. You're exploring. You're looting. Um, <clears throat> you're gathering resources. You're encountering different yokai, ghosts, and demons. You're fighting the ghosts in the streets. Um, the combat itself is fun at first, then gets repetitive, then you unlock more abilities, it gets more fun, and then it gets repetitive as you realize you've pretty much unlocked all the abilities after about eight hours, and there's really nothing else to it. I think, actually, last stream, we bought the final talisman, which is an item, it's an expendable item. It's not one of your combat abilities, but it's something that you can use from your inventory that causes an effect. For example, there's a stun talisman that stuns a large group of enemies in a radius. There's a, a distraction talisman that will lure enemies over to another area so you can either pass by them or sneak up behind them and get stealth kills. Well, I bought the last one, and it's like, okay, so in 12 hours, I have every ability in the game. Will I be able to upgrade set abilities a little further? Yes, but I'm literally not going to get a new attack. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. You know, a lot of people say that this game is repetitive. Well, every game is repetitive in some way. The question is, is the gameplay loop fun? For me, I'm enjoying the gameplay loop. I like that we're going to different areas of Shibuya, Tokyo, and each one feels a little different. Like, we started off in, like, a main city with big big skyscrapers. Then we went to a more smaller towns on the fringe, right? And then we went to a subway. And now uh, we went to, like, a, a, a woodsy, foresty area in the north area. So it's different depending on where you're going. And I like the different setups. I like that, that there's mini games to do. Like, for example, oh, find the hidden Tanuki, who are raccoons with, you know, who, are, who disguise themselves as different items and stuff. Or the, the side missions are really entertaining because they're all different. They're all, you know, a different plot line about a, a, a yokai or a demon or a ghost that's doing something. And you basically have to try to resolve the situation in, in various different ways. Okay. So that being said, um, I'm enjoying it, but a lot of people don't like that. They think it's too similar to say, like some people are calling this Far Cry Tokyo. I don't know how a game where you're constantly fighting ghosts and demons, solving haunted house kind of missions, and going through all these supernatural things has to do with Far Cry. The premise of, okay, open world, go around, collect, and fight things, yeah, that's Far Cry. That's also 4 million other games. So, I don't know. 
again, I guess it really depends on you. For me, this game has felt like one of the more unique games that I've played recently, especially visually. It's really been stunning to me. <clears throat> But I guess some people, they just don't like it that much. And that's okay. Like they say, different strokes for different folks. Everything is, you know, is not going to always appeal to everybody. I want to say thank you to those who have been following along with me with this playthrough. For variety purposes, it's worked well. Rather than me playing Elden Ring every day and getting burnt out on Elden Ring, instead I have something to alternate it with, and it served its purpose in that regard. Now, I don't know how long the game is. We've reached Chapter 4, but I don't know how many actual chapters the game has. Um... After 12 hours, I can tell you, since we've kind of hit a plateau where the combat's going to go, I would hope maybe the game's around 20 hours long, so maybe another three streams to wrap it up would be good. Now, maybe if you do all the side missions and side content, it's like 30 to 40 hours long, and I have done some, but I haven't done all of it. In fact, at this point, my map is starting to be completely littered with the side missions, and what I've been doing is, oh, if I'm you know, along the way to the next story mission and there's a side mission in the way, I'll do it. Or, oh, I'm going to the next story mission and here's a bunch of collectible things in the way I can see. I'll grab them on the way. But I'm not actively going out of my way to do all the content because I do feel like, yeah, that would probably make the playthrough feel very patty. Okay. All right, I'm being told by Kagome. The game has six chapters overall. We're in chapter four right now. So after today, maybe we'll, we'll get a good chunk into that. Maybe get near chapter five, you see. That's good news. That's kind of what I was hoping. I was hoping that at this point, maybe we're, you know, halfway or a little bit over halfway through the game. Um, <clears throat> there you go. Play Cool says, the main story is supposedly 15 hours long and 30 if you do all the side stuff. And I would say probably if you look at all the content, maybe I've done three to four hours of side stuff. Okay. So, yeah, maybe another two, three streams. Oh, it makes sense. Uh, probably another another, another three stream, or, you know, three stream situation to wrap up the game. And that would be good. Because let's say, let's say within another week, like by next weekend we beat it, then I could do something different. And what can I do? Well, I'll have options. I'll have Lego Star Wars, which is coming out on Tuesday. We can get the WWE 2K22 if that's what you guys want. We have all these different options of things I can do, and we'll have to talk about it and think about it, okay? Cool. <clears throat> ben asks, is the game worth buying a PlayStation for? No. No. I, I don't know if there's been a single game actually worth buying a PS5 for. Like, I don't think there's been a single exclusive that's like, man, I absolutely need a PS5 for it. I don't think there's been one yet. We're still waiting. You know, in general, owning a current-gen console, yes, there's plenty of reasons to just own a current-gen console in general. But I don't know if there's been a system seller game on PS5 yet. Okay. So, Ghostwire Tokyo here on the first stream. Three more hours of chill progress. Thank you to those who will hang out with me and relax and chill in the game. I really appreciate that because I'm liking the game and it is a fun interactive time when we play. Okay. Later tonight, 6.45 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, Kirby and the Forgotten Land continues. At this point, we are more than halfway through the game. The game has seven worlds and then a post-game world co uh, content. And we're entering World 5 tonight. Seems like every time we play Kirby, I basically beat an entire world in one sitting. I don't see why that wouldn't be par for the course tonight with World 5. The game remains really entertaining and fun. Some of the puzzles are getting tricky and ingenious. And I'm absolutely get having an, a, a great time. An absolutely great time uh, with Kirby. So I hope that you guys will uh, you know, continue to join me for all of that. All right, Good time tonight. And by the way, Kirby is chill fun. It's very interactive. We have a lot of fun conversation usually when I play it. And I really, I'm having a great time with that. And I hope that you guys will continue to join me for the fun. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> two thumbs up. Um, outside of that, uh, that's it for today. I'm just trying to think if there's anything in particular else that I need to talk about for today's schedule. What I will say is this. Today is a full day of streaming. All right. And I'm happy about that, that I get to stream all day. Please support the streams. Even if you're not particularly in love with the games, it would help if you could support the streams today. And here's why I'm saying that. You know, half the week, this week, I only got to stream once instead of twice. And I usually stream two streams every day. And yes, it does hurt when, for example, excuse me, yesterday, I did a really uh, fun stream of Elden Ring. We made great progress. Support was great. And then there was no second stream. It's like, man, it sucks. It's the second time. And now, guess what? Yes, it's going to happen again tomorrow, which I'm about to talk about. Okay? So... If you can support the streams, please do. Uh, I do need the help this week. It's been a, a rough week now because two days now, I'm only streaming once. And now again, a third day tomorrow, it's going to be the same. 
All right, so let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow, the 4th of April, Monday, one gameplay stream. There'll be a pre-stream podcast in the morning, and then it's going to be Elden Ring again. Now, the good news is I'm in a really interesting part of Elden Ring. We are in Lindel, the capital city. This place is a crazy fucking place. It is a legacy dungeon. It's not open world roaming anymore, and it is difficult. There are enemies in every freaking direction. Most of the enemies in this area seem to have been bosses previously from the game that are now just normal enemies, okay? Um, last, yesterday, the end of the stream was, was out of control, uh, where I was being chased all over the place. <laughs> Seriously. Um, <clears throat> I was on the run from freaking, uh, you know, oh, Jesus, Erdtree avatars, um, giant lion monsters, uh, crazy mutated freaks, plus lightning knights. Like, they were chasing me through the streets. I didn't even know where I was going. I got lost. I ran to the sewers, and I got out of the sewers, and I got to a point of grace. I was like, all right, I'm done. We're done for today. Tomorrow we regroup. Well, I say tomorrow, but it was. It's really tomorrow, tomorrow. We regroup. Um, I'm excited to jump into the city again. Now that I have a starting point in the middle of the city, I can go back down to the sewers and explore thoroughly there. We can go up to the city streets and explore there now that we have this hub to start from. So... I'm excited for that tomorrow, and it will be the only uh, stream that I do tomorrow. All right. <clears throat> oh, it looks like we got some trolls. Get rid of this idiot. And let's get rid of this idiot. Good. Fuck off, both of you. Two trolls. They're out of here. All right. Um, yeah, it'll be my only stream for tomorrow. All right? So, again, I would appreciate it if you can support the streams. Please do. Uh, you know, as much as you can for when I'm here. Because tomorrow night, Monday night, it is my, la by the way, tomorrow is my last consecutive streaming day of the week, six straight days. I cannot stream again tomorrow night. I was really hoping that I was going to be able to do a late night Skyrim uh, stream with you guys, Skyrim Anniversary Edition. We haven't played it all week long, and I really wanted to do it, and I can't. All right, why? I got to finish up with my taxes, let me tell you. At this point, I'm about six and a half, seven hours working on them. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there. Like, I really feel like Monday night I'll finish, but I'm not there yet. I've been going through all this data and man, let me tell you yesterday. So when I worked on it two days ago, it was a little different because I had a lot of documents to scan. I had stuff to type up and explain to my tax guy and all this shit. And then there was some number crunching last night. It was three and a half hours of staring at spreadsheets and transferring data and going through line by line, item by line, item, and figuring, is this, this, is this, this? How do I categorize this? And I was like, oh, my God. I I basically had to keep getting up like once an hour and walk away because my eyes were bugging out, staring at the screen so much. My body was actually getting freaking sore. It sucks. You know, I used to work an office job for almost five years, hunched over a computer like this, clicky, click, click, click. That was my job. Now I get to sit here and relax and play games with you guys all day. It's a much better situation. It's much more just ergonomically sitting in this nice chair here and being able to sit back and play a game as opposed to sitting on a computer like this, click, 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 click. It's different, and I'm not used to it. So I'm like, oh, my God, trying to get this done. And I didn't I didn't get it done. I did as much as I possibly could, and I'm not done yet. I need, I need another night. And it sucks because I really get the feeling that even once all the data is done and I send it to my tax guy, he's going to push back later this week and want more information and, and, and it's going to probably be a back and forth with him for like a week. And I'm probably going to have to take maybe even more nights off next week. I hope not. But it may be that situation. Um, and it does suck, but it is what it is. All right. Um, why not hire an accountant, someone says. Unleanable. Because I don't have money. That's the point. <laughs> Do you know how much it would, it would be to have a full-time accountant who tracks all of my financials all year long, live, and then is able to easily present that to my tax guy? Probably thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. Just think of it this way. Typically, here's how it works with taxes in the United States. You can self-file your taxes, and it's cheap. You can get like a, a piece of software for under 100 bucks, and you can self-file your taxes online, okay? But that only works for people who have very simple taxes. Like, I work a 9-to-5 job. I have a, a W-2 stub that comes, you know, once a year, tells me how much I made. Type the numbers in, done. That's the simplest kind. That's what I used to do back in the day. But ever since I became self-employed, it became very, very complicated, all right? So let me give you some perspective. There was one year where I went to H&R Block. For those of you who don't know what H&R Block is, it is a business that you go into, and there's a bunch of people in there who are not full-time accountants. 
what they are are part-time accountants, students, and essentially people who are trying to make a buck doing a side job, okay? Now, you may think, oh, well, there's all kinds of stuff like that in the gig economy today. The person who delivers my food from uh, Uber Eats or, or DoorDash or whatever, they're not a full-time employee either. You know, they just take the gig. Right. The difference is, if someone gets your meal wrong, you're a little disappointed that it's cold or it's, you know, they dropped it or it's the wrong thing. If someone gets your taxes wrong, you get fucked up. The government hits you with fees and penalties and destroys you because your taxes are wrong. Okay? So the very first year that I did this on the internet, I actually went to H&R Block and I sat down uh, with my ta with this guy, okay? And I'm like, okay, so, hold on a second, let me get rid of this idiot. So I sit down with this guy and I'm like, here's what I did this year. I'm, I'm Now I'm self-employed. I used to have a nine to five job. And by the way, here's the W-2 from that job. But here's all the income that I made from my new job, which is, you know, videos on YouTube and making ad revenue on said videos and yada, yada, yada. And I tell this guy this and the guy's face goes white and his jaw's like, he doesn't know what the fuck I'm talking about. He doesn't understand it. To him, I might as well have said, you know, I don't know. I was, uh, a, 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 I went to Mars and I would, I was an astronaut on Mars and I was mining for gold there or something. You know, how do you figure out how you get paid for that or how, you know, what are the taxes on that? He, he didn't know shit. Seriously, he was confused to hell. All right. And I remember basically giving the guy all the information. All right. And I gave him everything with, in regards to like expenses and things incurred with the business and all of that. And he sat down when it basically took him a few days and he contacted me and he said, come back, uh, you know, come back to the, the office and your taxes are done. So I go back and he's like, yeah, you owe all of this. And I was like, now, wait a minute. Well, what write-offs did I get? And he goes, write-offs? I'm serious. He didn't know anything. So the people at H&R Block, if you give them very simple data, they can usually do it. And it really is highly dependent on the person you get. If you have someone who's well-versed in the kind of business you run or, you know, expenses on a small business, you might do a much better job than someone who, say, is just a student who's fucking plugging numbers into a spreadsheet and hoping that you have real simple taxes so they can make an extra buck on the side from their real job and, you know, that they don't fuck them up completely. So I remember, you know, this guy does the uh, the taxes for me. Saved me absolutely no money at all. I basically paid out the ass that year, that first year. And I H&R Block, now this was, wow, this was 11 years ago, I want to say. I'm pretty sure it was around 11 years ago. They charged me $750 to do my taxes, okay? To do them probably wrong, okay? <laughs> so then I remember the next year, I found a full-time tax attorney slash accountant, and they charged me, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think it was around $1,250, and they did my taxes for me. But that person found me all the write-offs, all the savings, basically the absolute maximum savings on my taxes, you know. That's what you're going to pay if you own a small business and you need to do your taxes correctly and the most beneficial to yourself, okay. So just to do the taxes, if you give the person all the information, you crunch it yourself, you're going to pay anywhere from like on the cheap side, 750 bucks, all the way up to like, you know, 1250, 1350, 1400, 1500, depending on who you go to and how complex and what year and yada, yada, yada. Um, that's what you're going to pay. Seriously. Um, yeah. And uh, that sucks. It's expensive. You know, people don't realize that. Now, it's funny because I, well, why don't you have a full time accountant? A full time accountant. I want you to think about this. If you just once a year go to a tax attorney and you give them all your tax info, and they crunch the numbers, they review the tax law, they give you the maximum savings for how much ever work they do, and they're charging you over $1,000. Can you imagine how much a full-time uh, accountant would charge you to track your financials all year long? The truth is, if I were a big YouTuber, right? If I were someone bringing in millions of views, if I were someone making millions of dollars, or even hell, if I was making 500 grand a year, right? Some ridiculous amount of money compared to what I actually make, then yeah... 
likely I would hire someone full time to do all that for me. I would actually give them access to all of my accounts and everything and just say, here, you track it all year. Uh, I'm not ever going to be there. Even at my highest of highs, when I was making the most money I ever made, I wasn't even remotely close to being at that level. Um, so that's never going to happen. Okay. So that being said, <clears throat> it sucks. I do have to take tomorrow night off from streaming yet again. I would have loved to do Skyrim with you guys, and I can't. All right. I got to get this information done. So one stream tomorrow. All right. Elden Ring. And it should be a good one. Then tax shit for me on Monday night. I am off from streaming on Tuesday. Okay. I will not be here on Tuesday. <clears throat> So I hope that you all have a good day. Maybe get caught up on the stuff that I did over the week if you didn't have a chance. When I return on Wednesday, it's the big birthday bash marathon event, okay? And I have a big update for you regarding the event. Here we go. Two big updates, actually. <clears throat> First off, in regards to the cuisine of the event, I've had a poll running for two days, all right, on the main channel page of DSP Gaming under the community tab. I'm now going to check the results of said poll, and if they are as I believe that they are, then we're going to do something different as a follow-up. So, here's the poll, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Over 1,000 people have voted in the last two days, all right? Here were the three cuisine options for Feasting with the King. For those who don't know, Feasting with the King is a live show that I do right here on DSP Gaming during marathon-style events. What we do is in the morning we'll order some food, Usually from a restaurant that's a cuisine style that's not something that I frequently eat all the time. It's maybe something that on a rare occasion I'll have or maybe something that I've never even had before. And I usually try to try different dishes out that I'm not accustomed to or I've never actually experimented with before. So there's like a first time taste testing. Plus sometimes I try to purposely order other things that I know are pretty good so that I can give you some live review style content here on the stream. Okay. So. In regards to the upcoming episode of Feasting with the King, we had three cuisine options that you guys have been voting on for two days. Thai food, Vietnamese food, and barbecue. Ladies and gentlemen, as of this morning, here are the results. Thai food, 14% of the vote. Vietnamese food, 22% of the vote. And with an overwhelming lead, the most dominating vote I've ever seen since we've done something like this in the last year, Barbecue is at 63% of the vote. Whoa, that is huge, right? Like ginormously huge. And so obviously you guys want to see barbecue. However, there's a cave caveat, I think they call it to that. And the caveat is as follows. There's more than one kind of barbecue, right? Especially in this... Uh, Hold on a second here. There we go. That was really weird. <laughs> um, in this area that I live, there's multiple different kinds of barbecue food. And so what we're going to do now, we're actually going to do a follow-up poll to determine what kind of barbecue food you'd like to see me try during the live episode of Feasting with the King on the, the marathon on Wednesday. Okay? So here's the deal. There's three kinds of barbecue food in this area. But because the way that I do Feasting with the King is at home with delivery rather than live in the restaurant, really only two would be viable. Allow me to explain. There's three kinds of barbecue food really primarily available in this part of the state of Washington. There's American-style barbecue, Korean-style barbecue, and Hawaiian-style barbecue. Let me go through those. American-style is more traditional what you think of barbecue food if you're in the United States. Uh, Slow-cooked meats, for example rotisserie chicken, ribs of different kinds, because you get beef ribs, you get pork ribs, um, beef, slow-cooked beef brisket, or beef tips, okay? And that's just a few things. You know, a barbecue place, typically they'll do smoked sausages and other kinds of things, too. They do a wide variety of things, plus some traditional American sides that you would usually get with barbecue food would be like baked beans, corn or creamed corn, mac and cheese, uh, various different kinds of corn breads and things like that pretty good stuff and they go kind of kind of go together it's like american comfort food all right so that's one category of barbecue now another category would be korean barbecue it's actually popular where i live however because of the style of cuisine it probably is not viable let me explain 
Korean barbecue, what you do is you go into a restaurant, usually with a group of people. It's usually not just one or two people. It's like a group, a large group of people, like your family or a group of friends. And you sit down at a table together and you'll order specifically the kind of foods that you want. Different meats, different vegetables, different other side things. That uncooked food is brought to your table and you actually cook it together as like a family or a group of friends right there live in front of you and then you eat it super fresh, okay? It's very traditional. It's part of the culture of Korea. I think it's a really neat thing. It's something very different. At the very same time, um, it has to be called out that you can't really you can't emulate that experience at home. You know what I'm saying? Like as much as you would like to try, um, there's not much that you can do in that regard. Um, how are you going to cook all that food live at home? I want to sit in my kitchen and cook and be cooked. Then why did I order the food to begin with, right? And in addition to that, just being honest here, um, it would never be viable. I'm not going to cook stuff in my kitchen and somehow find a way to live stream it. Um, if I'm going to order food, I want the food to show up and I'm able to eat it with you live and not have a big pain in the butt, you know, situation of how am I going to prepare it. Now, in addition to all of that, it could be said... That, oh, well, you could just order other dishes from a Korean barbecue restaurant. You're right, you could. There are certain dishes you can order that are pre-cooked and pre-prepared, but they're not the typical things you would get. Like, those are special things that they have that are different from what would be considered core Korean barbecue fare. So why would I want to order that as the example of Korean barbecue when it's really not, right? So, even though Korean barbecue would essentially be popular and, and a good choice... If I did this show in a restaurant, it's just not viable for doing it during my birthday stream, okay? So that leaves us with the third and final kind of barbecue, Hawaiian. Now, Hawaiian food is actually quite popular where I live because I live in Washington State, which is the most northwestern state in the United States. It's like far northwest. And it's the hub for people traveling in and out of the country, you know, for a lot of places, but in particular, for those who live in Hawaii, this is the airport you fly to. You fly to the Seattle airport because that's the closest one to you if you live in Hawaii. So there's actually a pretty dense population of, you know, Hawaiian immigrants, I guess you would call them. It's confusing, I know, because they're not really, because they're not immigrants, because they, they technically they're part of the United States, even though they live way out there on an island in the Pacific Ocean right? But yeah, there's a lot of different Hawaiian foods here in Washington State. In fact, there's more fast foodie, there's a little bit slower, and if I were to order Hawaiian barbecue, I could order some interesting dishes. For example, they do some slow-cooked meats, they also do fish in a few different ways, and in addition to that, they have some, some just listen to this, they have actual gourmet cuisine made from spam. Yes, the pre-processed Canned ham is actually prepared and considered a gourmet food in Hawaii. I have obviously never had anything like this before in my life. It would be completely weird and out of my comfort zone to try it, but it could be pretty interesting as well. Will I like the spam gourmet food or not? I don't know. Okay. Now, I have had some of the Hawaiian food before. One time I ordered a, it was like a, a fish platter. So it was a special kind of fish and shrimp and my wife got meat and I didn't eat too much of the meat, but the two bites I had, it was totally different from American barbecue. While American barbecue is sometimes savory and spicy, the, the uh, Hawaiian barbecue was sweet and smoky. It tasted very different. I was like, wow, that's a very t interesting preparation. So basically, I would uh, enjoy trying out these different kinds of cuisine that I've never touched before if we did Hawaiian barbecue, okay? So, what I'm going to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> okay, I am going to put up a new poll on the main channel page of DSP Gaming under the community tab. Update. Which style of barbecue cuisine cuisine should Phil try out during Feasting with the King this coming when Wednesday during the Birthday Bash Marathon event? Good luck. And so, there's going to be two options. American style. Uh... 
and Hawaiian style. And that poll is going live right now. Boom. The poll has gone live. Let's see how you guys vote. Because your votes today, tomorrow, and yes, Tuesday will determine what actual style of barbecue I try during my marathon on my birthday. All right? And I'm happy with either. Like, I know I like American-style barbecue. I would try probably try a few things I normally wouldn't get, but I'll try that. And, you know, Hawaiian, there's a lot of things to try that I've never had before. So either one I'd be happy with. Um, please vote. And what I will do is later on, on this very podcast, I will check on the results of that poll, Okay. Ah, very good. All right, guys. So, very nice. And let us continue on. Let's talk about another aspect of the upcoming Birthday Bash Marathon event on Wednesday. What am I actually doing? Okay. What am I actually doing in regards to the gameplay of said marathon? Okay. Well. I have come to a determination that I'm going to announce today, right now, on the Pre-Stream Podcast. I have weighed and balanced your input over the last week. The question that I posed about a week ago was, during the marathon, what would you like to see me play? And there's been two options. Even though people have tried to throw a million options out there that weren't ever viable, there's been two viable options that you guys had to choose from. Option number one, Game Pass games. Play a variety of games off of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate that I've already started, and I'd be continuing on with some of these fun experiences. For example, Serious Sam 4, I Am Fish, One Piece Pirate Warriors 4, and likely one more game. Because I'm thinking four games, each game about an hour to an hour and a half, plus you add in the time that I'm going to need for Feasting with the King and the Pre-Stream Podcast, and of course trying out some birthday cake at one point. That's a good marathon length, okay? The other option is to continue on with all the current playthroughs that I'm doing and play each game for a segment. So, Elden Ring, Skyrim Anniversary Edition, Ghostwire Tokyo, and Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Each game played about an hour to an hour and a half, all right? So there's pros and cons to each. The pros of the Game Pass stuff is that it's not stuff that I'm normally doing, so it's good variety. A lot of these games people have already seen me play and like and actually have wanted me to get back to, and I just haven't had an opportunity to get back to them, so this would be the opportunity to do so, okay? The cons. Well, number one, that would actually stop me from making progress um, in said games uh, that I've been playing recently. And as you already know, I'm already backlogged, so it's already just going to set me back even further. And in addition, even though we would make progress in these Game Pass games, sadly, I don't know when I'm going to get back to them. So you might get a taste of a good game that you really like me playing, and then you have no clue when I'm going back to it, and it's kind of a tease, and then you get kind of disappointed that I'm not playing it again right away, you see? Now, in regards to the other side of the equation, playing the games that I've been playing all along, okay? So here's the, the pro of that is, hey, everyone kind of gets pleased because I'm playing a little bit of every game I'm playing. There's absolutely a large group of people who want to see me keep playing Elden Ring. There's people who like the chill streams, right? So it's a good variety of stuff. Basically, there'll be something for everyone during the marathon event. And <clears throat> I'll be making progress in the current playthroughs I'm doing so it wouldn't set me back, Right? The cons of this is, it's literally just more of everything that I've been doing, so it doesn't necessarily feel special from a regular stream, Eh, maybe because of the fact that I'm playing so many games in one day, but honestly, yeah, it won't feel as special as if we had planned out something completely separate, okay? All right, so, I've weighed and balanced all of the feedback over the course of this week, and I've come to a determination based on what happened this week, all right? So what happened this week? Well, essentially half of this week I wasn't able to stream when I normally would, right? Usually in a week that's six days, I've done 12 gameplay streams. This week I'm only going to do around nine. That's disappointing for me. It is. Like, I like to be here as much as possible and it sucks that I can't because I had to do so much work on these taxes. And, you know, I, I definitely understand some people have been disappointed saying, man, you really weren't here as much this week and we're so used to you, you, you being here being Mr. Dependable on the streams, all right? So, in regards to that, all right, after weighing and balancing and looking at all the different factors and all, okay, I've decided that on Wednesday, all right, we will be doing 
a little bit of all the games that I've been playing all along. All right. The difference here is that you're going to be able to determine the order. But I don't think I think we should do Elden Ring maybe kind of around the middle. I'm thinking like maybe we'll do the pre-stream podcast, order the food, maybe start with Ghostwire Tokyo, then maybe switch to like Skyrim, then do some Elden Ring and then finish with like Kirby. That's kind of what I'm thinking. All right. Um, so why? Why have I made this determination? Okay. It's pretty simple because this week set me back even further in the normal stuff that I do. If this had been a normal week, we would have played Skyrim at least twice. I would have had a fun Street Fighter stream. You know, basically the way I see it is this week kind of was so different that it, it disrupted the normal order of things. And I think that what we can do is we can take Wednesday as an opportunity to basically play a little bit of catch up. And like I said, I think that when I if I do this on Wednesday, like like I'm saying, it'll please everyone at least at some point during the day. Some people will come for the chill stream content. Some people will come for the more hectic, challenging stuff in Elden Ring. But because I'm doing that variety of stuff, and because we'll be doing all the ongoing playthroughs I'm doing, it won't set me back. It'll make people feel more like it's a normal flow this week, you see? Um, that's what I'm thinking. All right? Now, I realize that's not going to please everyone. If this week had been a normal week, and we had done all the normal streams, like the Skyrim stream and the Street Fighter stream and all that likely I would have actually done Game Pass on Wednesday because that would have felt like it would have broken it up a little bit. But I just feel so backlogged on everything because the way this week went with the taxes, I want to use Wednesday as an opportunity to basically kind of catch up a bit, okay? So, that's what we're going to do. And I think it's going to be a great day. We're going to play a good variety of stuff, a little bit of every game, so everyone will be pleased. And like I said, probably the order I'm thinking is we'll probably start with Ghostwire Tokyo. Then we'll switch over to like Skyrim for some chill stuff. Then we'll do some Elden Ring. And then we'll probably finish with a nice chill Kirby stream to unwind at late night. Okay? That's what I'm thinking. So, all right. That's the deal. That's what's going to happen on Wednesday. So, how do you participate? Vote right now. Head to the main channel page of DSP Gaming. Head to the community tab. And vote on the type of barbecue cuisine you want to see me try this coming Wednesday on my birthday. All right? Right now, I can tell you that Hawaiian-style cuisine is in the lead, but not by much. We only have 83 votes. Hawaiian is at 58%, while American is at 42 Not too far off. It's like, you know, a 60-40 split, but not even 100 people have voted yet. Okay? So, please vote. And, uh, like I said, it'll be two days of voting. And then we'll figure out on Wednesday morning what won the poll, and we'll go from there, okay? All right, sound good? I hope that sounds good, okay? Um, if not, I'm sorry. I wish that I could please everyone. Like I said, I can't please everyone all the time. Uh, I weighed and balanced what you guys said, and then I also kind of factored in exactly what happened this week. If I didn't have to take so much time away from streams this week to do the tax stuff, I probably would have done Game Pass. But, it, you know, life is what it is. It turns out how it did, and I can't really change that it's just is you know you go with the flow and you deal with it right all right cool um all right now outside of all of that i have one more thing to talk about and then we're gonna just gonna get to shout outs and, and some q a with you guys okay as you guys know i announced a new type of monthly goal this month in regards to memberships if we get 400 memberships i'm doing a special react style video and stream where i react to a video that was made about me over five years ago following my history as a content creator from my very early days all the way through early 2017 it's called down the rabbit hole dark side film made by youtuber frederick nudson and it has over six million views on youtube so quite a lot of people have seen this video and kind of think that that video is the end all be all of dark side phil what a lot of people don't realize is that in the five years since that video was made, I have dramatically changed myself as a content creator in a lot of ways as a person. And uh, they think that that is like an, a, a, a universal representation of who I am today when in reality it definitely is not. Okay, now, <clears throat> that being said, all right, I feel that this video could be something special and interesting. I'm going to react to the things said in the video and let you know how much is true, which a lot of it is. And how much maybe is either over-exaggerated or misinterpreted or maybe a little bit of conspiracy theory kind of deal without any justification. And I will tell you the truth about what's actually discussed in said video. It's about 30 minutes long, but I bet you I can add a hell of a lot to this stuff, okay? And people, by the way, have asked me 
over the last many years to react to this kind of content. And I always told you guys, nah, I'll just stick to gameplay. But in this regard, since we're trying to do something completely different and outside of my comfort zone, I agreed that I would do it. All right. So that being said, <clears throat> um, and by the way, I agree. John Anthony Lifestyle says, I think it's a pretty unbiased video. I agree with you. Unlike a lot of other videos made about me, this particular video, you could tell the person did research to the best of their ability. You know, there's not always factual information about everything available on the internet, but they were trying to do a documentary. This was not an attempt to slam. This was not an attempt to insult. The work that this guy does is very matter of fact, okay? So that being said, um, basically what we've seen in the last day, we got almost 15 new members already. In one day, I, I announced this on April 1st, within like 24 hours of that happening, we already got like 10 to 15 new members. So if this growth can continue, if every day we're getting a few new members here, a few new members there, we absolutely will hit the 400 goal by the end of the month. The record on this channel is 391. So it would be great to hit the 400 and then we'll lock in the event. And when would the event be? Truthfully, we try to, you know, figure out that out once we hit the goal. You know, the sooner we hit the goal, the better, obviously. Um, and we'll go from there, okay? So, please consider becoming a member of this channel if you're not. Some of the many benefits you would get would include a highlighted name in the stream chat as well as in the comments of videos. The ability to use my emotes in the stream chat and also in the comments of videos. Getting a cool chat crown badge next to your name to show how long you've been a channel supporter. You will not <clears throat> have to abide by the slow mode rules of the chat at all. You'd be able to chat as much as you want while everyone else has to wait. I think it's like 10 seconds to send a message or something like that. Um, and when there are special events, which right now, they're really the birthday event really doesn't qualify. But when there's a special event like a, a viewer's choice event or another marathon, usually the members get priority to nominate and vote on things to take place in the special event. And so you get that as a, an advantage as well. Oh, by the way... When Ask the King returns, which right now it is definitely on hiatus, but once it returns, when things slow down with the games, possibly later this month, uh, members get priority access to get their questions answered live on the show as well. So you get a ton of benefits for being a member here on the channel. Please consider doing it. If you do become a member, thank you in advance. It'll help us hit this goal, and I'm really excited, actually, for this to see how it goes. The, tr the tr truth of the matter is, if this event goes down well, if it's well-received, if people enjoy it, I would not be opposed to doing it again, okay? Something different, different kind of video, another React video to something else, right? But let's see how this one goes in general, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to shout-outs. Let's do it. So, we start off today with King Cobra JFS, who did a $2 super chat, who's saying one of the dumbest things I've ever heard why not stream your taxes? All right, let's think about this. First of all, he says, Don't, just show you, not the documents, okay? So number one, <laughs> oh, I can't believe I have to explain this to an actual audience of humans on the internet, but apparently it has to actually be explained. So I'll explain it, okay? There are just certain things in life that should not be public, as you know, I've made an honest effort in the last five years to change the way that I portrayed myself and my life on the internet. I don't feel like every piece of my life should be a piece of dramatic content for people to digest and to be monetized. Um, <clears throat> in fact, since I separated my personal life from the content that I put out here on the internet, my personal life has dramatically improved. Think about this. I found the love of my life. I got married. We have a great personal life behind the scenes together. We have a family essentially with Jasper Kitty. And guess what? You don't know about 90% of it. You only know about the very little bit about it that I tell you, right? And that's a good thing. It's good to have a private life. It's good to have some privacy and some things to keep sacred within a family unit. You know what I'm saying? You need privacy in life. And a lot of t the times earlier on in my YouTube career and being a content creator who didn't have any examples to follow, I didn't know that. And I would kind of talk about everything publicly. I would share everything publicly. And, and admittedly with you guys, I can tell you right now, that was a bad idea. It hurt myself. It hurt my business. It actually hurt my family members. It hurt people close to me. And it essentially ruined friendships and relationships and things that I had with people. 
because everything was public and people don't like that. People want to keep stuff private, especially if it's something that has to be touchy or, or dramatic or, you know, a situation between maybe a, a small group of individuals and it's not necessarily something that should just be aired out. Everyone's dirty laundry doesn't necessarily need to be all over the fucking internet at all points. As much as people love that because people are toxic, dramatic, drama queen idiots, at heart, these people really aren't doing that because they're interested. They just want to laugh at you, right? So that being said, okay, I don't want to share everything about my life with you guys constantly. One of the things that absolutely should absolutely say, say private is everything to do with the behind the scenes of the business, the financials, etc. You guys don't need to know about that. She has nothing to do with you, right? Um... And the fact is, your suggestion, King Cobra, stream the taxes and just show you not documents, all right? What exactly is it that you think I do when I'm doing this number crunching stuff? Do you think I'm doing entertaining commentary on it and laughing about transactions and income? Like, what exactly do you think it is that I'm doing? I'm sitting here staring at a screen going, you got type, copy, paste, type, copy, paste, type, add, add, copy, paste, type, co add, add, copy, paste, type, add, add, for hours on end. Okay, not only is there absolutely nothing whatsoever entertaining of value in that, okay, but in addition, I'm the kind of guy that when he's heavily into something, I'll say stuff out loud on purpose because when you say something out loud and you vocalize it, you kind of, it sticks in you. So I'll give you an example. I'm playing Shenmue and you need a combination to something and I'll make a song out of it. Oh, 5876426540. Oh, 5876426540. Oh yeah, now I'm going to remember the number. And because I vocalized it, when I get to the thing to do it, I'll remember it. Of course, I fuck up half the time. I forget it anyway, but that's the point I'm making, right? So imagine me now. Oh, I'm going to live stream my taxes, right? And I freaking doing it. I'm, and I, now, now I start accidentally saying out things, transactions, private information, uh, you know, account numbers and shit. Oh, yeah, well, this, blah, blah, blah. oh, shit. You see? <laughs> be pretty bad, no? That's the point is, no, that has to be one of the dumbest suggestions I've ever heard. And obviously the only reason the only reason that anyone would want to see me stream something like that would be because you want to see something slip. Something private, something personal, something harmful, something that absolutely the public should not know. People want to see something slip and then they can make their next dramatic video, their next bullshit conspiracy theory about it. All right? Even even as saying, you know, oh, it's not that big of a deal because, you know, if, if, if everything you say is true right, about you and your business, then there's nothing to hide. You're right. But the point is, it doesn't matter if there's something to hide or not. No matter what, people will say there is and make shit up about it. You see the point I'm making? How many times in my history as a content creator has something happened that literally that's not what happened, but people have insane speculation that that's what it must have meant or must have been, right? Wasn't it... This is pretty crazy. Wasn't it like a marathon last year where I was playing a game, and I guess in said game, I picked up a power-up, and the power-up said something like um, increased damage or something like that. And I guess I had actually said, when I was doing my commentary during this, this lengthy marathon event, something like, oh, bonus gem damage or something like that. And literally just because I said a word gem, that one word, you see, Phil plays mobile games. What? I said the word jet. Phil plays mobile games. That's concrete evidence, guys. He let it slip. What are you talking about? Right? What the hell? Like, <laughs> so imagine I'm doing my taxes and I'm live streaming just my face, not the documents. And I accidentally say something like funneling money to an offshore bank account in the Cayman Islands to fund my yacht and my fleet of planes. Wait, what? Huh? It's obviously true, right? But I think you see the point I'm making here. It's lu a ludicrous suggestion. It's stupid. Number one, it's not. it wouldn't be entertaining. Number two, not everything is meant to be monetized. There are things that should be private and behind the scenes. The fact that you would even suggest something that's stupid is really, really ridiculous, okay? So there you go. Um, it doesn't make any sense, and I'm not going to do it. It's really stupid. Okay, continuing on. 
Uh, stacked rectangle pasta. You mean lasagna. Did a super chat and says, why wasn't lasagna an option for the poll? Because, because there's no good Italian restaurants around here. Being quite frank with you, like, if there was good Italian food, I absolutely would have Italian food as an option for feasting with the king. There is none. There's very, first of all, there's very few Italian restaurants in general where I live. Not many Italians live out here. The, the Italian restaurants that exist, a lot of them are very inauthentic, like Olive Garden. <laughs> so, obviously, you know, with, with very few options, you can't really make it a viable thing for, for Feasting with the King. In addition, for the few that are here, they don't deliver. Like, I've looked into it, and they're too far away. They're outside of the delivery range. You can't order Italian food. So, there you go. Um... Review Tech USA did a super chat and says, Satisfying beef tips. Good for you, Rich. Thanks for the super chat. Um, Darkness re-upped his membership for 11 months. And he says, Supville, seven months already. Actually, Darkness, according to this, it's 11. I don't know if you're aware of that. It says it's 11 months, not seven. I don't know the accuracy of that or whatever, but it does say you had 11 months of, uh, of uh, support. So there you go. Thank you. And Kyle Denson. Has just done a super chat and says, as someone who also lives on the West Coast I, and has been here for two and a half years, I have to ask you, did you go to Hawaii yet and do you recommend? I've never been. Uh, since I moved out here to Washington State, essentially what happened is I completely overextended my means when I moved out here. I spent and way too much money and I racked up way too much debt in the move. And since then, I literally never recovered. Like, what ended up happening, in a nutshell, I'm not going to go into this giant story today, but in a nutshell, I moved out here. And I racked up a ton of debt, loan debt, credit card debt, all kinds of debt in order to move here and furnish the house and pay for the move and everything. And in addition to that, I was assuming I was going to make the same level of income every year and it didn't happen. What ended up happening was I moved out here and all of a sudden DSP gaming tanked in 2015. So within, whoops, I kicked the camera. Within one year of living here, my income went from, oh, up here, nice and consistent to way down here. And it just kept going. Like it never... It never stayed up there. It was like like an a, a ongoing decline. So I ma made all these financial decisions and things based on, oh, I'm going to make this much money. And then I didn't. And then I had to basically do a bunch of really bad decisions in order to make ends meet for many years to the point where I ended up declaring bankruptcy a couple years ago because I just couldn't make ends meet anymore. I couldn't even satisfy my minimum payments on stuff. Um, and it's a, it's a bad story, obviously. It's not a good one that I like telling. It's a cautionary tale. For anyone out there who's making a living in a certain way, but you're not sure if it's going to be consistent, don't just assume. And also, don't make crazy financial decisions overextending yourself when you have no idea if you're going to be able to consistently live up to those obligations, right? Don't do what I did, right? Make, use my situation as an example for yourselves. But anyway, the point I'm making here is I moved out here in 2014, and since then, I have literally was up to my eyeballs in debt and was never able to basically do anything. I stopped going to conventions. I stopped doing events of any type. I just have to work all the time. Um, not to say that my work is, is bad. I like my work. I love my line of work. But, yeah, I just have to be here as much as possible all the time to make ends meet. Um, so, that being said, uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance. Now you might say, well, you declared bankruptcy two years ago. Why don't you go on a trip now? Because now I'm still in bad situation where I have all these back taxes and things that I wasn't able to write off in the bankruptcy. There's, I'm still owed them. And I'm trying to catch up and I haven't been able to, especially with last year when I lost my partnership with Twitch. That was a big blow to me because I was at a point where I was in a situation where every month I was playing catch up and it was working. Oh, if I stay the course, I can get caught up on all my obligations and within like a year, two years, I'll be good. I'll be able to afford things again. Like I told you guys last year, I was thinking of putting money aside for either home improvements or going on a honeymoon with my wife. And when I lost... That partnership with Twitch, it all went away, you know. Now I'm back to the drawing board of barely making ends meet every month, um, if I even do. So it sucks, but that's just the life I live. I don't have the means to go on a trip. I don't have the means to do anything like that, you know. It just is what it is. <clears throat> all right, anyway, so yeah, I haven't, no, I haven't gone to Hawaii. I haven't done anything. We'd like to eventually do, now that COVID's kind of blowing over finally, we would eventually like to do something um, 
you know, our long-term desire is to do something outside of the United States, like maybe Japan or Europe, right? But more realistically, short-term, you know, I'd like to maybe do something in the States or maybe nearby, like Canada, just over the border, but it's just not viable. Maybe, maybe in a few years right now, there's just no possibility of anything like that. Okay, let's get to the tip side of things. We start off with Anso Kamaru, who tipped a dollar forty nine and says, "FYI, if you order Korean barbecue takeout, they cook it for you and send it. They don't want you to send you raw meat. The quality of it after it arrives, however, depends on how fast you'll get it. That's the same as literally any other delivered food." Yeah, and the thing is, again, since the real highlight of Korean barbecue is to eat the food in person while it's freshly cooked. I don't think that it would be a fair representation, nor I'll be honest, I don't think it would be a good waste, uh, a good waste, a good use of my money. I feel like I'd be wasting my money ordering food from a Korean barbecue place just to get it pre-cooked and show us up not fresh. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is part of the cultural experience of Korean barbecue is to cook and eat it right there fresh with everyone with you. And if you're not going to do that, you're just going to get it like takeout order. It's, it's different. It's not the same. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't want to even have it as a uh, as an option. I don't think that it would be fair representation of the cuisine. Plus, like I said, a waste of money. You spend a lot of money on it, and it's not going to be nearly as good. Uh, Lousy Lobsters tip me $1.50 and says, Why not complete your income info throughout the year instead of painstakingly going through everything all at once? Well, I, I've talked about this in previous years, and I'll, I'll briefly answer this rather than go into insane detail. Um, number one, I'm super busy. If you're not aware, I'm here six days a week full-time streaming. And that doesn't just mean I'm here on stream streaming five hours of gameplay. It means there's a pre-stream podcast. It means there's setup. It means there's uploading in between. It means there's all kinds of shit going on. Plus, I got other personal responsibilities to my family and my life here. Um, on a normal workday, I don't have time to do shit like that. Okay? I just don't. Now, are you suggesting that once a week on my day off when I'm spending time with my family, that instead I'm sitting down to crunch my financials for the week? In addition, that's really not how it works because a lot of my financials don't get determined right away. For example, today, I'll make a certain amount of tips. Cool. That I can figure out. Outside of that, any kind of super chats, super stickers, memberships, I don't even see anything from that until next month. So on a daily basis, I can only figure out one kind of income, not all of them. Essentially, what I would need to do is set up a pretty elaborate system of tracking this all along. All right. The way that I do it now is basically I have several different sources of information, spreadsheets, data I can pull from different websites and things. And then I have to put it all together into one big, almost like a presentation. You know, I guess I guess some, some places they will call it a profit and loss statement, while others would call it like an income expense account statement. I'm not sure exactly what it would be called. But essentially, I'm doing accounting work is what I'm doing. I'm sitting down and I'm saying... Here's the income, here's the expense, here's what's this, here's what's that. And I don't do the ins and outs of tax law. I just get the data together and I send it to my tax guy and he figures out per tax law what counts as what, okay? Um, so that being said, would I love to have a system in place to track all this shit for me? Yes. Sadly, that's not really viable because of the way that my income comes in. I would love to have a system by which tips are coming in via PayPal and it's auto tracked for me. So at the end of every day or every week, it could tally up that amount and say, here's what you made, Phil. Nothing exists right now. The only thing I could do is do reports on PayPal that are not accurate. PayPal has so many factors involved. You guys have no idea. You send me a tip. Number one, PayPal has to determine if you sent that tip in United States denomination or a foreign denomination and does it have to be converted and what's the conversion rate and there's a formula there. Then they take a fee and the fee is determined on many different factors including the size of the transaction and how you sent it and where you live and all of this. Literally every transaction is its own entity. Every tip I get is a unique situation. There's no, oh, just run a report and you get the answer. It doesn't exist. I, I wish it was that simple. Really, I wish it was. There's just nothing like that. Um, if anything, the easiest form of income to figure out is actually my YouTube side ad revenue because that's auto-determined by YouTube behind the scenes. And what happens is YouTube just kind of pays me for it once a month and I can pull the data off of YouTube and say, here's your data of what you made. 
that's the easiest factor of all of it. Definitely, it's the tip stuff that's super complicated. Um, yeah, or just over the top complicated, actually. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah, like, could I do it all along, all year? Yes. And here's what would happen. Instead of me this week being stressed out and having to take three nights away to do it, I would have to basically spend hours every week trying to pull data off of PayPal and put it into a spreadsheet, hours that I don't really have. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't have that time um, because I'm already working full time. I would have to take time away every week to do it from my usual work schedule, which I don't want to do. I'd prefer to just work as much as I can, have fun with my job. And then, yeah, if once a year I do have to kind of sit down and hunker down and be stressed out for like a week or so and half the week I can't stream or whatever, then so be it. Rather do it that way. Now, the truth is, usually <clears throat> I would do this around February because usually February is a very slow month for games. Um, this year was the opposite. This year, February was the sl the busiest month for games in years. So I didn't, usually I'd sneak it in. Oh, I'll do one night in early February, one night in late February. If I need an extra one, we'll do one extra in March or something. I would spread it out. You guys wouldn't even notice because it would be such an oddball you know, here or there doing it. But the difference this year was basically there was no opportunity to do that. I was so busy. It would, it would have been shooting myself in the foot if when all these new releases were coming out to start taking streams off. You know what I'm saying? So, there you go. There's your answer. So, thank you, Lousy Lobsters, for the, the tip and the question. Okay. I'm being asked by someone, why did your Sea of Thieves review get removed from KO Gaming? I have no idea. I was never notified that that actually happened. Um, I don't get notified, actually, on YouTube of any of that kind of shit. You would think I should, right? You would think, oh, if something gets taken down, um, then you should, you should obviously... Uh, have a situation where you get notified and there's all these details. I get nothing. And the truth is, on a daily basis, I wouldn't be surprised if dozens of my videos from over the years all around my various channels get taken down for various reasons. It could be copyright. It could be uh, community guidelines, which I can't imagine that a video would be up for that long and all of a sudden now they figure that community guidelines, something went wrong. It could be a million things. I have absolutely, positively no idea. Zero. Um, what I would have to do, I guess, is go to KO Gaming and look and see if there's any data there about it. Like, I'd have to log into the channel and basically look at the data for the channel, which is not existed. There's almost no views on that channel anymore or anything like that. And I would have to see, you know, is there anything there? Is it taken down? Is it hidden for a certain reason? If, if, it, if you guys can't see it anymore... Like, if you just can't find the video, that sounds to me like someone tried to claim the video for content ID and the video got pulled because of that. Um, I can't imagine what in the video was content ID match because on KO Gaming, I was not using copywritten materials. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was purposely making those videos... Uh, as... Po as uh, how can I say as fair use as possible, right? The, everything on KO Gaming was meant to be more professionally made, to have better, you know, uh, retention of viewership. And I didn't use copyrighted music or anything. I was just basically taking elements from the games. Um, I have absolutely no idea. And by the way, all the videos on KO Gaming are from 2016 or 2017. So you're taking a, a five to six year old video, right? Apparently that you're saying is gone. I can't answer. I would have to take some time to, to actually look into it myself. And is it even worth it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I mean, the channel's still there, right? Channel's still there. So obviously, it's, it wasn't like a, a huge issue. Um, I guess what I could do is at some point try to figure it out. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to go over there and mess around with it. Like I said, you would think YouTube would contact me and send an email and be like, "Hey, FYI." This video was taken down for this reason, and here's what's going on. I get nothing. I literally get nothing. I, even on DSP Gaming and other... I get n absolutely no notice on anything that happens on the channels. They just do it. They just... Oh, slam you with a content ID match that takes down your video. Copyright strike against your video. I just... I gotta figure it out after the fact. It's pretty stupid, huh? <laughs> All right. Rob on Wheels 
Just tip me $5, which is the biggest tip of the day. He has a very nice and heartfelt message here I'd like to read, but let me get him on the leaderboard first before I forget. Thank you, Rob on Wheels. He says the following. I'm not here for your gimmicks, as you full well know. I'm just, I just want to say thank you again from the bottom of my heart for doing what you do. You're welcome, man. And it's people like you who, who remind me every day that what I do has value, right? Through your kind words. And I appreciate that. Um, when I started 13 plus years ago, I was just dicking around to some asshole on the internet, uh, not intending to make a dollar doing it, just kind of doing stupid stuff for a hobby, uh, inspired by other people who didn't really necessarily have production values or anything like that, thinking if, if I'm just acting like an asshole and I yell at a camera playing a game, maybe some people will find it funny. And it took off and it ended up ended up being my, my fallback job when I lost my job of almost five years in an office and turned into something much bigger, much more popular, much more epic and life-changing than I ever could have imagined, right? I never intended for any of this stuff to happen. In the last five years, I've really tried to rebrand myself and re-change change myself into something better something different, something way more positive and less toxic than what I used to be. Um, you know, as a full-time streamer, I feel that in a lot of ways I've achieved that as opposed to what I used to do. Uh, and I want to say thank you to everyone who has been along for that ride. You know, every day I get people coming by and they say, hey, just so you know, I get a lot of value out of what you do for this reason or that reason. The other day someone was like, you know, I'm not feeling too good because something happened with a family member and... Just watching your content put a smile on my face and made me feel a lot better today. And that means something, man. It does. That's meaningful stuff. That because I'm here putting out content that I can take your mind off of something bad or make you feel good about something, right? And I'm happy about that. So thank you guys for that. I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you, Rob, in particular for the tip and the kind words. All right. A couple quick reminders before we get to open Q&A. If you enjoy my content and you like what I do, please consider giving it a like on YouTube. If you're on the live stream right now and you're having a good time, please give it a like. If you're watching this video on demand on YouTube, please give it a like and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the content of the video because this is engagement that helps the channel, okay? All right, <clears throat> let's now open it up to, you know, the internet here. Let's open it up to people in the chat. Open Q&A. Low Carb Madman is the first question saying, do you think you'd be better off if you hadn't fallen into making content? There's absolutely, positively no way to know what would have happened. What I can tell you is thus. When I lost my job, unexpectedly in late 2010, I got laid off. I didn't have any fallbacks. In the job sector I was working, <clears throat> there was nothing. I would have essentially had to go out there and go back to doing like retail or maybe even fast food, likely, in order to make ends meet and have enough money to keep the condo that I had bought to live closer to the job I got laid off from, I would have had to have like two jobs, seriously. So can you imagine me trying to hold down two jobs and commute to two said jobs that likely I hate in order to hold down enough money to keep the condo um, at a time when the economy was very bad back then. It was very, very slow and bad. There was almost no jobs available. Um, the jobs that were there, everyone was overqualified for and everyone was taking a job under what they felt they deserved because there just weren't enough jobs to go around at that time. Um, admittedly, if I didn't have something to fall back on, um, I don't know what I would have done. Likely it would have been like, well, I flub about for a year trying to make ends meet and, and then financially things fall apart. Now, you know, I don't know. Here's the thing. My life likely would have been way different, right? Like, I probably would have never made the content I did. I never would have traveled the way that I did, meeting the people I did. I never would have done any of the projects or co-op stuff that I did because if I'm not a content creator, I'm not constantly doing stuff with John Rambo and stuff like that. None of that content would have ever existed, right? Uh, likely, YouTube would have ended up just being another side thing that I did a few hours a day, if that, because if I had to work two jobs, where is the time going to come to do the YouTube stuff, right? Um, you know, who knows? I... I definitely feel that if it hadn't been for me becoming a full-time content creator, I never would have been able to move across the country, get out of Connecticut, move to a nice place here in Washington State, and have the life that I have now. I never would have met my wife or anything like that because I never would have had the life situations going on that, that happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, my life would be so dramatically different and, quite frankly, worse. I don't see how it could have been better. Just being honest, like, I don't see how it would have been better if I hadn't done content creation, because right now, as I tell you guys, 
<clears throat> every day I feel is the best day of my life. I genuinely feel that way. Like every day it's a fresh new day, you know, spending time with my wife and my family, doing fun stuff on streams with you guys. Every day is a new opportunity for fun stuff and a great life. And, you know, back then I enjoyed what I was doing, but absolutely there were days when I felt like it was a grind and not every day was fun. And at one point I was getting very burnt out on what I did for a job until things turned around. Um, you know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, my, my, my life today is much better than it was back then. Just being honest, you know, back then, I told you guys that way back when, over, you know, a decade ago, I was depressed. I hated my life. I hated who I was as a person. I hated my, my job because I felt like I was being mistreated at it and not appreciated and you know, overworked and not un underpaid. And I didn't really have much going on for me, you know, besides I had a competitive street fighter. And then when I got my back injury... And I couldn't really travel to do competitive Street Fighter anymore. It all got thrown away. Like, what am I going to do with my life now? You know, this is something that I've been doing. You know, Street Fighter was my hobby for a good 10, 15 years. And I couldn't even find myself doing it the way that I wanted to do it anymore. Because my back was so messed up at that time, you know. So, <clears throat> in a lot of ways, if I, I didn't have the, the full-time content creation uh, thing. You know, I don't know what would have happened to me in my life. Just being honest, you know, it could have been, it could have gone a lot of different ways. Um... But certainly, I don't think that they would. I would have ended up, you know, in in the position I'm in today, and as happy as I am today. At least that's my personal feeling. And the thing is, it's all speculation. You know what I'm saying? It's all speculation, and that's the thing that I, I don't understand about people who are like, "Oh, what's your t five year plan? What's your ten year plan? Where do you see yourself in ten years? Today, do you are you where you thought you would be ten years ago?" I don't live my life like that. I never have. I don't think there ever would have been. If when I was 20 years old, do you think I would have predicted where I would be at 30? When I was 10 years you know, younger, just starting, kind of starting off 10 years ago as a content creator, or I guess at that point I'd been a full-time content creator for about a year and a half. Did I ever predict I would be where I am today? I never would have known any of this. What's the point of these crazy looking forward kind of deals and trying to guess or plan? You don't know what's going to happen in life, right? There's highs, there's lows, there's ups, there's downs. There's always unexpected things you didn't see coming. Why on earth make yourself try to adhere to a crazy outline or a plan? And then when things can't adhere to that plan, now you feel like out of sorts and you feel sad because you couldn't reach your goals. Who cares about that shit, man? For me, it's like, listen, you do your best every day with, uh, with what you can do with your life and you go with the flow and you have a good time and you handle things as they come and, and you know... Not, I'm not saying that planning ahead is a bad thing because absolutely I like to plan ahead as much as I can. You know me. I'm a methodical guy. I want to have a schedule for all weeks so you know what to expect every day on stream, right? At the same time, you can't go crazy <clears throat> over the top and try to figure everything out on the, you know what I mean? It's just not possible. At least for my life, it never was. So, um, an anonymous $2 tipper says, I've had many moments where I was super glad that you had uploaded or you were streaming something cool, having a bad day or just a bit of a sad time. It's cool that you're almost always here to join and have a fun time. Thank you for the constant, excuse me, the consistent amount of fun stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Those are very kind words. Thank you very much to the anonymous tipper. My first knockover of that thing today. Thank you very much to the anonymous tipper for the kind words. Zoya just did a super chat saying, how do you keep the podcast from getting repetitive? Well... Admittedly, every day on the podcast, there's usually certain topics that we cover, like the gaming schedule and stuff like that. But also, you know, there's there's variety in the news. I don't control what gaming news comes out. So if there is new gaming news, that's always a new segment. Uh, I don't know what you guys are going to ask me. So every day, when we actually do... Uh, the balloon just came off the wall. Son of a bitch. That's not good because there was a sticky or a thumbtack on it. Oh, it's still in it. Okay, good. There was a... Whoa, shit. There was a push pin in the balloon that I don't want to lose because I want to re-stick it in the wall here. <laughs> and I don't want it to go on the floor and then I step on it and I got a push pin in my toe. That would be bad. Okay, here it is. Can I reattach it? I can try. Ah, it's kind of loose. I'm afraid I'm going to pop the balloon. Oh, God. I probably am going to pop the balloon. <laughs> well.
Well, I guess this is something I have to do later. I don't know how I'm going to pull this off on the fly here. I can't even find the hole. Oh, there it is. I see the hole. Hold on. There we go. Can I get it into the wall? <laughs> the, the live stream challenge. Can Phil reaffix the balloon to the wall without popping it? Here we go. Take your bets. Well, that is so, oh, that didn't work. That went right out. All right, I'm gonna try to make a new hole. Oh my God, this is not working. My wife did this, by the way. I didn't do it. My wife put this up the other day, but she was better at it than I was. And coming right out. Wow. Well, there's no way that's staying in. I don't know how she did this. She actually got the push pin to hold the balloon in the wall. <laughs> I don't know how she pulled this off. I guess the balloon's coming off the wall for now, folks. <laughs> I don't see a way to do it. The balloon, <laughs> I don't see a way to do it at all. Uh, so I guess uh, we'll see if maybe she can reattach it later or whatever. I'll put it down here for now. It might pop during the stream, in which case if you hear a loud explosion, you know what's going on behind me. Okay, and I'll take this push pin and put it away. Actually, I know what I'll do. There we go. That way it doesn't land on the floor and I step on it and you hear me screaming, right? Okay, anyway. Um... There's how I keep it fresh. That's how you keep the pre-stream fresh. You never know what's going to happen. What's someone going to ask when someone does a contribution? What's going to be their, their shout-out message? When I open it up to, to open Q&A, what are people going to ask me? I said to you guys at the very beginning of this podcast today, I didn't have much to talk about, right? But I guarantee you we're going to do a full podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 1230. Every day time flies here, man. Seriously, every day <laughs> time flies on the pre-stream. It just goes, whoop, wow, time went right by. Now we're done. The pre-stream's already over, right? Uh, what's up, Turtle Dude? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. I believe there was some more shout-outs, or uh, excuse me, more uh, YouTube side stuff. Yes. So, Snow Cooper, to the Super Chat, saying, my family's trying to sacrifice me. All my life, I've been a human battery. Anyone know how to ask Snow Cooper? And here I am, DSP. Wait, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Tartarian Truth did a super chat. Says, if you could be any game character, who would it be? Oh my god. Any game character? None. I want to be in a game. Games are dangerous. There's always some fucking crazy thing coming after you. Right? There's always some mutated freak. Some giant over-the-top ridiculous risk. There, name a game where, there's, where everything was nice and happy. <laughs> it's not much of a game. You have to overcome some kind of a hardship or a challenge for a game to be entertaining. So why would you want that? I, I don't want my life to be have more hardships than it already has. Right? So there you go. The answer is, I would not want to be in a game at all. None of them are desirable. Anso Kamaru says, Animal Crossing. Fuck no. There's crazy fucking spiders and shit, right? Coming after you in Animal Crossing that bites your ass. I don't want to be in Animal Crossing. No. There you go. Kagami says, I saw your Spider-Man Edge of Time playthrough last night on DSP Gaming. Edge of Time. So that wasn't, hold on, that wasn't Shattered Dimensions. That was the one after Shattered Dimensions that didn't do so well, sales-wise. That's right, because there was Spider-Man Web of Shadows, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, Spider-Man Edge of Time. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Edge of Time was the one with Spider-Man 2099, wasn't it? And you go between the two Spider-Men? Yeah, I remember that one now. Damn, it's been a long time since I even thought about that game. True Seeker says, what's the most I ever drank in one night? How bad was the hangover? I mean, I couldn't factually answer that. I don't, I didn't measure back in the day. I used to drink too much, like way too much. I told you guys, I was, at one point I was a alcoholic. I hated my life. I was depressed. I was sitting there drinking rum and Coke every night. And the cup that I had, to give some perspective here, the cup that I had was about 
this big, okay? So we're not talking a, a standard beer glass. We're talking a giant plastic cup it was big. And I would pour, I'm not exaggerating, more than halfway up with rum. And then I would take like a Coke Zero and to put it into the top. There was so much rum in the cup that the Coke Zero would be diluted and it would look more like uh, like very light brown than dark cola, cola color. And I would just fucking drink that right out of there with a straw. All night I'd be sipping on it for hours and hours. It was fucked up. My life was fucked up over a decade ago. It really was. Thank God those days are way behind me. Stuff was really messed up back then. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Okay. No meme, I thought you said you mostly drink gin and sparkling back in the day. I never said that at all. I literally never said that. Uh, back in the day when I was really bad in the drinking, it was always rum and coke. At one point during my tenure as a content creator, someone asked me what was my favorite drink, and I said, oh, gin and tonic. I like gin and tonic. And some people saw in videos, sometimes I had like a thing of Tangeray or something in the video, and immediately became a meme on the internet that all filled drinks is gin and tonic. In reality... I probably drank less gin and tonic than other drinks in my life. Seriously. But these idiots latch on to shit like that. And then they push it out as their narrative. Again, like I said, people memeing for the sake of memeing because it feels like this real groupthink mentality. So they believe somehow in their heads that all I do is I sit around drinking gin and tonic all day. It couldn't be further from the truth. But this is what they've propagated in their heads. These really weird of ideas and opinions that just are not true at all. But to them, they are because they just said it so many times. They believe it. This weird, because we say it, it's true. Rather than, oh, it's based on a factual thing. There's like an observation or two in a video or two where Phil mentions gin and tonic. So it just must mean that it's just all he ever drank ever. It's like, that's, it's just madness, honestly. It's pretty stupid. Madness. That people would believe that. They're dumbasses. Okay. I, Leviathan. Tip me three dollars. Said you inspire me to be alive at all. Will you return to Sekiro? Uh, I don't know about being alive at all. I think there's way more things to live for in life than me and my content. I'm just saying. Uh, as for Sekiro, one day maybe I'll return to it. Although, admittedly, I do think I like. I'm not kidding. I think I like every single other From Software game better than Sekiro. I do feel that like. Well, now that the balloon's gone, I should put this here. This is kind of blocking the balloon anyway, so I'll just leave that there. So anyway, uh, you know, not to say that I didn't like Sekiro. I thought it was good. I just didn't think it was as good as any of the other FromSoft games. Um, it was too much of a one-trick pony repetitive deal. I didn't like it that much. So if people wanted me to go back to it and really campaign for it, I wouldn't be against it. At the same time, I'm not in love with the game, and I don't think I'm going to enjoy it as much as other games, you know. Shout out to Nathan. Who just became a channel supporter. Thank you, Nathan. You know what we should do is we're about to adjourn the pre-stream podcast. Let's take a quick look at members and how we're doing. Because remember, we are trying to hit the members goal for the month. Um, and I, you know, I think that every day we can make some pretty solid progress. Let's take a quick check on how we're doing. 364 members. We did go up a member. So thank you so much, Nathan. All right. All right, guys. It's time to end the podcast. Thank you. Great pre-stream podcast today. I hope you will vote on the type of barbecue cuisine you want to see during the marathon on Wednesday. I hope you're excited that we're going to have a good variety of games on the marathon on Wednesday. Thank you for the support. I hope you will support the streams today because today I get to do a double stream day when I will not get to tomorrow. Uh, let's get this podcast adjourned. So we can start with gameplay. Sound good? All right, guys, thanks. You've been a great audience, and let's get started.